Hey, it's Teapock, and I have not put up a video on Monday or Wednesday. The reason for that is, I recorded Dysfunctional Systems on Monday. Tumblr, what is going on with you? Kill the page. Okay, sorry. Oh, no. Um... So, I recorded it, the audio, and I said, I think I posted saying it'll be up on Tuesday and said didn't have time to edit it. Yeah, so I didn't have time to edit it, and I checked, and it was, uh, the audio file was corrupted. And I was like, are you kidding me? So then Wednesday, I went to record the same part again. This time, I made sure the audio file worked. And it did. The video file was corrupted. So. And I, I tried to like see if I could sync it up right. It didn't really work. So, third time's the charm, I hope. And let's get into this. Uh, just so you know, there is a choice that I encountered and uh, I'm gonna use the same choice. I'm just gonna pick with what I go with what I originally had. I lift my head and look at him again. He shivers and looks from me to the fountain. I'll make sure of it. But only if you shape up. I'm terrified. I know. Okay. Let's finish this up, alright? I push away from him and wipe my eyes and cheeks. I feel as though there's too much this is too much for me to take. It is hardly anything to have faith in Cyrus. The further I go down the path of a mediator, the harder it is to have faith in anything. Still, if I feel this is so wrong, then I ought to stop it, right? I should stop all this from happening. I should stop this war, plainly and simply. I steel myself and stare directly into Cyrus's eyes, sure to convey my conviction. Sir. Y yes I am confident that we will succeed here, too. I'll also make sure that we will not fail. Hmm. The mindset is good, Winter Harrison. Hold on to it. It's easy to lose. Alright, let's kill the president. My soul decides to flee from my chest. What? What? That's the obvious course of action. That isn't... No, no it's not. That's the least obvious thing. Oh, then what's the most? Talk to him? Convince him that he shouldn't do the things he wants to do? Winter, we don't have the time for diplomacy. What mediation is all about diplomacy? No, it isn't. I shouldn't even have to tell you that. Mediators are simply neutral parties that enter worlds with problems, assess the situation, and solve the issues by whatever means necessary. You, you really are scum. What? I look him in the eye, nearly snarling. What is it, sir? You think I'm deaf? Every student knows how you handle things. That's right, people talk about you. Everyone knows that you're a murderous and cold... Ugh. And don't talk to me like I'm stupid. I'm that stupid. I don't remember what they said at orientation. I know that setting existence to balance is totally important. I know how needed it is. But I thought we were more heroic than that, and I... And I... I can't believe I felt confident because of you. Do you even hear yourself? What is necessary? We shouldn't lower ourselves to that barbaric level. I'm really starting to tire of your love, Harrison. Ugh, um... Now, listen here. Many in Brighton do not support aggression against Cabria, I've heard. That is only natural. War is a terrible thing. Furthermore, while their poverty extends far, it can't be argued that this situation is for the best. Barnaby does not see that, though. He sees his own solution as the only solution. The people do not side with him. That is at least one issue that needs to be addressed. They must support him. They must feel that his decision is right. So I will kill him. In doing so, the blame should be placed upon Gribria, and it should be clear that the to the populace that they have an enemy to fight. What, an, what is he saying? 
Was all that talk before to prepare me to accept this evil? To prepare me for these calculated deaths? You, you're you just... Not, you're not just asking me to support killing a man, are you? You're going to allow the nuclear bomb to be launched as well. Are you insane? I can't sit by and allow that. You've underestimated the plight of these people. Oh, what? Oops. Scroll. For Barnaby, who has no real power, to rest it for himself in such a dramatic fashion suggests that he's not willing to listen to reason. If we had longer than four hours, then it would have perhaps been possible to change his mind. But like this, just forget it. That nuke will be launched. All we can do is unite these people before they go to war. We can still bring this nation into order. Order? Does that bother you? Stability is paramount, Winter. Ah, so cool your head. Think about this logically already. Being a mediator isn't a thing of emotion. That's... What? That's only your opinion, and you're only one person. Don't act as though you know anything. I don't know a lot, but I do know with that murder is the worst thing a person can do. So horrible and disgusting and terrible that we don't even write about it and it never happens. What? You want to rebel against me again? I don't know. I don't know if I should because you're kind of right. You... you? Hmm. Doesn't look like it. They're so tainted by their troubles that it's doubtful that I could convince the president to stop this. Killing him instead, though? Letting the nuke go off, too? Could I even forgive myself for that? Yet we probably don't have very much time. From what I've read and what I've heard, it seems that the weapon can be released very, 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 released easily very, very soon. Winter. Last, I need more information. Are you saying that preventing the launch and war is impossible? I'd mentioned before that with luck it won't be. With their president gone and the only remaining leader being a backup, there might at least be a delay on the bomb, which would give us more time to attempt other plans. The death of the president could also lead to Cabria taking Brighton much more seriously, since it signals dangerous levels of civil unrest. In which case, Cabria would probably leash this nation completely before they even had the chance to launch the nuke. Alternatively, there's also a small chance, a very small chance, that Cabrillo will give in to Barnaby's demands. In the likely case that none of these possibilities come to pass, however, you can still expect the relations between Cabrillo and Brighton to proceed much differently from now on. Brighton's citizens will believe that Cabrillo has a stranglehold on them so complete that they can kill the president less than an hour after a threat of aggression. Some will be in fear to rebel against such power, but many will be emboldened in the belief that Capri has gone too far. What's more, once the bomb has gone off, the citizens won't be afraid for much longer. The fusion bomb holds unprecedented power here. Nobody understands it, not even Brighton. It could separate these two and muddled nations to produce a no new order. As an added bonus, once they see, it as see its power and grow to fear it, it's probable this world will never see a nuclear weapon launched again. If Barnaby were to launch it now without his nation's consent, the people would condemn him as a tyrant. It would lead to both a civil war and an international one. We need to make him a martyr, a hero in death. He will be a sacrificial symbol of bright and loyalty, and the people will follow him posthumously. Gracious, he seems so sure of himself. Would this really be for the best? Would this bring about order? What should I do? Okay, I went with follow Cyrus. My reason being, Cyrus has a plan. Rebelling won't get you anywhere. And so here's, okay. Barnaby, the president, is kind of an asshole because he just threatened a much bigger country with a nuclear bomb. It's kind of like, he threatened it and gave a time constraint. So it's like, he's going to do this in four hours. It's not like, hey, we have a bomb. Kind of like, it's it's not like North Korea where they're like, hey, we have a bomb and it works. 
Barnaby's like, hey, we have a bomb, and I will fire it in four hours. And that's more threatening. And the fact that the people don't back him, it's also, like, just suicide for Brighton. Like, even if he launches it first, odds are Brighton is going to be obliterated because it's much smaller than Gabria. They don't have much power. And I understand why they would want to rebel. But going about it through a nuke is not what I would see as the correct way. That's my opinion. And so I'm just going to say this now. When I picked Follow Cyrus, I played some more. And basically it made it known to me that pretty much that's not the right ending. Or it's not a good one, because Winter is complaining the entire time. And, yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna click it. Ugh. Fine. I refuse to invest any more heart into this. It's out of my hands. I'm just here to watch. Yeah, then that's what I'll do. If Cyrus wants to go around murdering people and being a terrible person, then I guess that's his prerogative. I'll just consider this an example of how not to be a proper mediator. Here's another thing. Uh, Winter said that Cyrus is often kills people. That's some stuff for the rebels, rebels si rebel side. And I'm assuming Cyrus often goes into situations and he's like, the problem can end if I end the person that caused the problem. Which is a way to do it. Now, I don't believe that is a good way to do that, go about things, just kill the problem immediately, kill the person. I don't think that's a good way to do things, except for this situation. When so many lives are at stake, if you kill the president and then launch the bomb or launching... So if you kill the president, there's a chance that the bomb will not be launched. If you don't kill the president, it's going to be launched. Like, no doubt about it. Because he's, like Cyrus said, with the threat of a nuclear bomb. That's like a last stand kind of move. And he's not going to back down from that. So in this, in this situation, I agree with Cyrus, even though Winter has said that killing is like the easy way out and Cyrus often does that this is all we can do winter yeah whatever I must say that the thing I hate most about this is that daddy isn't entirely wrong not about the murdering that's definitely wrong no question it's just that I don't really know anything Cyrus is a mentor he's been doing this for a while evidently from the candor in his voice he's good at it too even if I took the lead, in the face of my inexperience, anything I suggest is likely to fail. It's just, it's just so frustrating. Winter. I will follow you, but I hope that you know that I won't be killing anyone. This is your bloodstained proposal, not mine. I'll watch and I won't help. That's all you're here for. That's right. I am only here to watch and learn, that's all. As such, I stop talking and just stare at him instead. We need to find a library. Is that so? We need to find out where the president is. We visited this world before, but not this country. We don't know where their government office is, or even if that is where the president will be. We need to learn more and quickly. This feels like a lecture. Wait here. He turns and runs off to a woman passing by, one of several women and men who have seemed to begun filling the streets as, as the president's address assumably ends. Well, okay. I didn't exactly have the urge to flee just now or anything, although I wouldn't mind going home and ignoring all this. Demanding a withdrawal is a failure, though, so I will stick with it. Granted, I'm sure that would make an exception for a situation as unique as this, but no. I have to see this through. I ought to see this through.
I turn my attention back to my mentor who has finally reached the woman. Until she notices him, he is wearing an expression so stern I'm sure it would stun her. But after that point, she is met with a bright face and a smile. He begins talking with her amiably, outside of my earshot, and I stop paying him any mind. Something about that high charisma of his now disgusts me. Perhaps it's basically manipulative it's the basically manipulative angle from which he ultimately approaches everything. Well that's his job. <laughs> Or at least that's what I think his job, that's how he perceives his job, as needing to see both sides, analyze it, and manipulate it the best way possible for the best outcome. Ends justifying means, the needs of many over the few, various ridiculous philosophies. I don't, also, the needs of many over the few? I somewhat agree with that. Like, in this situation, kill the president or let a nuke be dropped, I would kill the president. If it's like, the needs of the people of Brighton are the few, compared to Cabria, I don't believe with that. I don't believe in that. I don't think that is uh, a good justification. Because there's so much more Gabrian, so many more Gabrians than Brightons. But that doesn't mean you should put down the few. Even for having to be around him, I feel gross and dirtied. Worse for being associated with him, and especially worse for letting him do what he wants. But right, of course, I shouldn't let any of it bother me. Just as he said it, my job is here to watch. My job here is to watch. This isn't my responsibility. Distance from him now, I start feeling much calmer than before, and when he returns, I've settled down enough to feel oddly impassive about the whole situation. I just ask for directions. There's a library close by. Come on, we're running. With that, he takes off in a sprint, clearly slower than his, than his true pace. I would guess for my benefit. For a second, I contemplate walking, but I reason promptly that there's no point in making matters any worse. I follow fast enough. Being in the presence of books has a pla placating effect on me. Ever since we entered here, I've been breathing sighs. Everything makes sense in books. Everything is carefully placed, planned out, logical, and clear. They reflect on what I once admired in reality. Of course, reality doesn't offer such things anymore. 